Friday, <laughs> people, and we are live and alive. I'm not sure I like that. I don't either. I'm just going to keep saying it. This is Ari the Data Queen, joined by analyst whole Matt Muscardi, Jesse the Money Whisperer, and Hazelnut Rollins. Ooh. Yes, yeah. thank you. No intern Chantal today. Aww. Aww. Because of you, Ari, you're late. <laughs> But today, yeah, I, I am. I'm very unprepared today, which is unlike me. But today's weekly wrap up will have story of the week, goodliest of the week, as holiest of the week, most exhausting. I can't say exhaustingest of the you week. Just you did. just said it. <laughs> well, it doesn't make any sense. Um, and then who won the week and some predictions? Yes. Which I don't have prediction yet. But I do. Yeah, that's fine. On You'll the just fly. yeah, do a prediction just on say the mine. fly. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna keep it we're gonna keep it tight this show. So, Damien, sure. why don't you start? I, I oh, it. look, I like this. because Story of the week. I'll believe it when I hear it. <laughs> keeping it tight. <laughs> it will not take four hours long this today. I got four concise stories, starting at the top. <laughs> yeah. No, I do. I really four. do. You're, you're laughing. They're concise. They're easy. All right. This looks, sounds like everybody's laughing. Cheryl Sandberg stepping down from the board at Meta Platforms. No one ever oh. says Meta Platforms anymore. Meta Platforms. That's the real name of the company. She was COO for 14 years. Really, she was the CEO. I think everyone knows that. Uh, she was a director mm-hmm. for 12 years. Meanwhile, here's two other Meta headlines from just today. Meta document show... 100,000 children sexually harassed daily on its platforms. Oh. And wow. this headline from The Guardian, very scary. Mark Zuckerberg's pledge to build advanced AI alarms experts. So that's all, that's what's going on. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. If, I were, if I were Charlotte, I would have stepped down 10 years ago, maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe 14 but. years ago, yeah. yeah. Uh, second story, Elon Musk gives Tesla's board an ultimatum Ooh. as he seeks... Oh. To grab more power, he wants 25% voting control at Tesla or he'll stop growing AI development at the electric car maker. I think it's the first oh. ultimatum I've ever seen from a CEO to its board. The first I mean, petulant and child. This, this surprises nobody, right? No, it, I'm actually I, I'm upset actually surprised. that we didn't predict this. That's true, Ari. What? No, I'm, I've never seen it before. So I guess in that sense, I'm surprised. He currently has about a 13% stake in Tesla. But he had around 22% before he sold off some of his shares to fund his Twitter purchase in 2022. So he, so he, so he's he, just pissed off. Yeah, he's just, he's just sad. And here's a quote from a, a tweet that he put out about this issue. He said, if dual class can be done, I'm all for it. So he's referring to getting uh, extra, like extra voting rights for his shares instead of getting more shares. He says, it's weird that a crazy multi-class share structure like Meta has, which gives the the next 20 plus generations of Zuckerberg's control is fine pre-IPO, but even a reasonable dual class is not allowed (laughs) post-IPO. Reasonable. Oh, he's jealous. Not not only is he jealous, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can ignore this statement, but I'm sorry, but it feels slightly anti-Semitic to, he's threatening us with 20 plus generations of Zuckerberg control. <laughs> Why does he have to say that? Why is he alluding to 20 plus generations? I don't I never understand a word this guy's talking about. It's I don't know why he didn't say 20 plus years of Eck control. Like uh, Daniel Eck has the same thing. I, I don't know, yeah. I, well, I don't and know. I love that he calls it crazy. It's a crazy structure over there and I want it. Hey, <laughs> Tesla. <laughs> I want it. Tesla Incorporated in Delaware and they should have known the the rules of, of what that means from corporate and dollar. But anyway, that, that's all I'm going to say about this. Well, story. I got a question about this because it does seem like all the headlines are saying Elon Musk is holding the board hostage, uh-huh. but he's holding investors hostage. Yeah. The board is elected by the investors, and he is basically saying to the investors, if your people, which aren't their people anyway, um, don't agree to this, then I am going to sabotage my own company by taking development somewhere else. Well, it's not that his. That is it's unprecedented. Not, it's not his own company. I'm sick of this narrative. I, I, I mean, honestly, like with everything that goes wrong at Tesla constantly, I, it probably seems like a good time to bring in some, just like they did at, you know, um, uh, Uber. Airbnb, maybe it's maybe now it's that, a good time to bring be, someone else in. 
Yeah, how would that be for a flex if they just if they why if not? they but I don't I don't understand why they not. toss him. The third big story of the week. I think Matt, you're going to be covering this a bit. Uh, the headline is making ESG a crime. Uh, Republican re- representatives in New Hampshire, of all places, led by... Oh, New Hampshire, come on. Well, that's the live free and die st- or die states. I'm a little confused by this. Uh, <laughs> led. Uh, this is legislation that's led by an inv- evangelical Christian, I, again, which is an anomaly in, in New Hampshire. I didn't know there are inv- evangelical <laughs> Christians in New Hampshire. I guess they're everywhere now. Of course there are. Uh, yeah. A man named Mike Belcher introduced a bill that would prohibit the state's treasury, pension fund, and executive ban- branch from using investments that consider environmental, social, and governance factors knowingly violating the law would be a felony punishable oh, by on. not less than one year and no more than 20 years imprisonment, according to the come proposal. On. So, well, this isn't gonna 20 pass. years. So, just to tie in the last story, if you were to make an investment decision based on this, on the crazy anti Semitic, racist, misogynistic CEO at Tesla, that's using a governance principle, right? You're, 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 you're whoa, assessing whoa, whoa, whoa. risk, you're assessing long term risk based on the leadership of the company, and that would be illegal. What isn't a governance principle? If you have a thought in your head about how a company is run, that's a governance principle. Well, hey, but this guy's saying that would be illegal. That's you the should third. only do it based on getting yourself that money. That's I mean, all you... That's do the we old, really that's think it. this is going to pass? This is, uh, this is hopefully not. Ari, have you, have you looked at the world we live in anymore. Have you looked yeah, at the country, Ari? it's pretty crazy out yeah. there. And I just don't believe it. I don't believe it. Sorry. I like your optimism. Well, I don't. Uh, Ari, Next, I will, I will tell that. you that Next. the CEOs are coming back from Davos. Oh, I think oh. she just cut you off. She just nexted you. Ari, I'm saying that the, the CEOs are coming back from Davos predicting that Trump was going to win re-election. So you, would we yeah. have thought that was possible a year ago? They're not the, They're not correct. The fourth Fine. big story, uh, BP says interim CEO now permanent after predecessor resigned for failing to disclose personal relationships. Uh, before I name those people, I, I once again want to call out how horrible business headlines are. They, they can't name either person here. It's just an interim <laughs> CEO and a predecessor. <laughs> like, like it doesn't matter who runs BP. I mean, like it doesn't <laughs> matter. But that's that that man is Murray Oceancloth. Uh, he is replacing Bernard Looney. So that's what's going on. Those are my four stories. What is his personal relationship thing? So we covered it. Already. I guess you weren't paying attention, oh, Ari. God. But Bernard Looney <laughs> had several undisclosed <laughs> relationships with colleagues at BP. That's that's basically why he was let go. I'm sure there was other bad things going on. But this the, seems familiar. But, I thought it was that other company. Never mind. But the crazy thing here is that Matt and I talked a bit about this. I think on Wednesday is that Murray Ocean Clause also has a relationship with a BP oh. colleague, oh. but oh, wow. it's. He properly disclosed, disclosed. it. It he was disclosed filed properly. Yeah, so it. there you go. Those are my four big <laughs> oh my stories. God. Oh, it was they a couldn't find issue. anyone that just didn't do that. No, no. Well, they weren't Jesse, available. <laughs> they actually the talked concern. about. They had a four-month international search for external <laughs> and internal client uh, candidates. Couldn't find anyone. They used the board expertise. They used an external consultant, and they, no, they could not find anyone. There wasn't they one didn't person. Use us. <laughs> So that means you got four stories to choose from. Sheryl Sandberg stepping down. Elon Musk's board ultimatum. ESG's a crime. Like the scarlet letter letters. And BP's interim CEO now permanent. Yeah, and how, has many, a name. how many I scarlet letters would it be? I can't believe it's taken Cheryl this long to step down. I cannot really why it. why do you, is she, why is she like somehow independent of all the crap it's that just, went on at, at Facebook? What does I that mean, mean? Do you really want to be associated with all right. So many controversies. Well, associated. She was the, I, I mean, know, she I know. was the number two know, in power. I, know, I mean, this I is all. But, but she, on her own, outside of Facebook, dated Don't tell me the about Bobby, CEO Bobby of Activision, <laughs> Bobby oh, no. Kotick. But beyond so, that, I, I hate this, this. There is a narrative that I see in the business press that somehow is that, that, is that she is separate from everything bad going on at Facebook. Because Okay, she is Facebook. You're right. Yeah. And I can't believe she's stepping down. She is Facebook. Why are you leaving now, Cheryl? Why? Well, I have questions. So <laughs> I'm going to choose the Musk story because... Oof, oh. Yeah, that one... Uh, Jesse. I really don't want to vote for him. You don't have to. I'm going to do making ESG a crime. That seems, well, I was gonna, I seems was important. Gonna. 
Right here That's in New England. I'm ashamed. Right here in New I England. I know. It's supposed to be the same, although New Hampshire's never been sane, so. Those are the two that I was warring between in my brain. Break um, the tie, I, th- I think the story of the Keeping week. Keeping it exciting. Um, I think it, is it exciting? <laughs> I guess when I put a For drum roll on it, it is exciting. <laughs> Is uh, Elon Musk and the ultimatum? Oh, boo! And, and look, that one's easy enough to say that because it's unprecedented. It is. It's there crazy. has not been a right. sitting CEO right. of a non-dual Fire class him. company Fire who him. basically demanded dual class shares. It's going to be the same thing that happened to Sam he's Altman. De- he's demanding That's dual class for shares but he's to back. do his job. Well, but even worse, even worse, even worse, he's gonna- thre- he's threatening to build something that could make the company a lot of money somewhere else, like. That's the, I mean, that, that's grounds for termination. Uh, it's unpre- Just it's, fire it's him. Fire yeah. him. I don't yeah. care. It's a car. Who cares? Fire him as CEO or... Fire, fire him as everything. Just firing. Just fire him as a human being. Him permanently. Send him to Mars. Is that possible? Oh, sh- well, what do you call him? The chief... Is this the chief one where he's Chief Techno King, I think. Chief Techno King. Ew. Yeah, yeah. Idiot. Right, right. Techno All right. King. All right, cool. Well, moving on. Yes, Ari. <laughs> Ari. We have... Tell me. What, what happened? I sent you 14 stories. Where are they? You sent me those stories while I was at a pediatrician. Oh, the last one I sent you was amazing, three too. Hours. The last story I sent well, you was incredible. Next week. Next week. You're, you're going to have to deal with these. Uh, okay. We're going to start with the <laughs> MBTA, the Boston Transportation <laughs> System. Yes, the T. They rece- right, the T. They received $200 million from the Millionaire Tax Funds. Do you guys Ooh. remember the millionaire tax? Yeah, Ooh, millionaires. No, it passed, Refresh my memory. It passed uh, in 2022. It's called the Fair Share Amendment, and there's an additional four percent tax on annual income over a million dollars. Shocking. And all of that money from uh, all of that revenue is exclusively going to education and transportation, which is, I think, the only reason why this passed. I love oh. this. Come on. So, anyway. Uh, Two hundred million right into the T. Come on, you guys, this is great. Uh, I, I like they this. could do. They could it. do some upgrades. Yeah, yeah, they could. It was on fire a year and a half ago. Do you yeah. remember? Well, now the they can buy line? water. I mean, over a bridge. You would hear. And somebody jumped out, and suddenly, <gasps> like he was a Boston hero There's for jumping bit, out. I mean, like, look into in, the water. Yeah. In order to use the T, I mean, like you to live in Boston, you basically have to make a million dollars. Yeah, it's not yeah. cheap. Like, Boston it's not is cheap. so fucking expensive. Well, Mayor Wu was wasn't she piloting making bus ru- certain bus routes and subway routes like free? I don't know if that ever. I mean, this would this happens. would help. Yeah, yeah this would help. help. But you still can't live there. Like. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. It's, well, no one uh, can actually live there. Anyway, what else do you have? Well, I guess everybody that lives there is getting this 4% tax. All right. And number two. I don't know how I'm getting you riled up about this one, but <laughs> Mark Cuban. Oh, no. Ooh, I lo- okay. <laughs> Let's vote for a billionaire. Why not? Hey, as far as billionaires go, this yeah. is a good one right here. <laughs> I, I might disagree and on this one. Tell why. you yeah, why. Tell yeah. us why. This is a headline. Mark Cuban doles out $35 million oh. in bonuses to Dallas Mavericks employees nice. after Stop. selling majority stake we like in the that. franchise. What's wrong with that? Do you know how much he sold headline. it for? Do you know how much he sold it for? Damien. Yeah, but but if you liked the Taylor Swift giving everybody I, I didn't care about, that one. I didn't care about that one either. This would be, I'm is. saying if. Everybody I say else if, is. If, thank if you, Matt. you like. <laughs> okay, maybe you'll care about this one. Because we love, you know, billionaire opinions here. Mark Cuban says, yes. good businesses embrace diversity. Okay. The loss of DEI phobic companies is my gain. Oh, yeah. And well, I like that. It's specifically talking about like Elon Musk All right, fine. and Bill Ackman being jerks. Oh. Yes. Now Damien really likes it. So, I'll give and you. He was, and he, and the, I liked how he talked about it. Yeah. Because it, he... He was like, well, this is obvious. Of course, these people, these people are, you know, ethnic minorities. I know people of color, whatever. Women, these people are being overlooked. And that is where I go and look extra hard to find the best people for my company. Yeah, yeah. So, look, correct. I, mean, I he's applaud. Just smart. He's just smart. I applaud Mark Cuban. Uh, he's one of the more likable billionaires, but he's got, he's got some problems, believe me. But I will say that he put his money where his mouth is. One of the reasons why the Dallas Mavericks organization is worth so much money, and l- and let's be real here, he sold it for north of two billion dollars, right? And I, and I think he bought it for around two hundred million dollars. So he's giving uh, what, like two percent? Wow. To 
uh, employees. Mm-hmm. But anyway, but one well, of the reasons why pay a lot in taxes. One of the reasons why it might be worth so much money is he hired a black woman CEO to run the organization. So he should thank uh, his 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 DEI yep. maybe yep. for that. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not voting maybe for that anyway, so I don't it. care. I'm not. I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, you have two options, two options only, even though I guess Damien found 14 good stories this week. I didn't find any. Yeah, I didn't find 14. Yeah, I sent her I, I sent her some it. incredible what stories. There, there was one good story oh, about God, how they stopped the doing cruises <laughs> in, in, near the Red Sea because yep. of terrorist attacks yep. on boats. Hari, I, that's fantastic. How about this one? Late entry, doing a cruise. Late entry. Hari, how about this one? How students in Seattle got more school counselors paid for by the city's wealthiest corporations they went oh, right really? after amazon that's pretty good they got the city I mean, council they got the city council to get another 20 million dollars that went directly to mental health in schools i mean that's come on that's sweet students, we can lump that with this. the mbta because you know no like we can't lump anything we we're going with these two <laughs> jesse right, what's vote. your vote uh, MBTA took out my vote. Oh, that means uh, and you Damien go, already voted MBTA. No, I didn't vote. I didn't vote. You, d- well, you're, you're not, not voting you're for Mark. No, I'm not <laughs> voting for Mark. So you already <laughs> said I'm not voting for that. What I would have I would have voted for Mark Cuban because look, oh. there how many billionaires at this point are talking about the value of yeah. MBTA right now? Mm-hmm. You As are, if it was obvious too. Like like there's only two camps that have sort of evolved uh, in you this the value new DEI, post diversity yeah, uh, yeah conversation, which is. Bill Ackman and Elon Musk saying diversity is the root cause of every problem that exists. Elon Musk was forwarding memes about how Boeing's plane didn't yeah, work because of diversity, right? Like we're basically so just worse, saying worse than that. Black, brown people, that. women, that, that we shouldn't even talk about them we sh- because they are the ca- root cause of the problems that we have. And then there's the quiet camp of people who know that diversity matters and have stopped talking about it yeah. because it's become well, politically listen. Or actively removing things from their website. Act, exactly, exactly. And, Matt, and Mark Cuban is neither of those. Matt, don't undersell. First of all, don't undersell what Elon Musk did. He actually, he he questioned the IQs of, of graduates yeah. from historically oh. black uh, colleges and mm. universities. He did way yes. worse than what you said. But I, it, I, you know what, Ari? I actually would have voted for Mark Cuban if you took out this bullshit PR piece about him giving <laughs> this this like minuscule bonus to the Dude, I'm sure the thousands of people fault. working there. I'm saying it's I would vote Yahoo I would, News picked up on it, okay? I would agree with Matt, but since you put that stupid uh, thing in there, I'm going to vote for the MDBT. I love Mayor Wu. I love Mayor Wu in Boston. I love Mayor Wu. That's All right, vote. so that means MBTA wins and not Mark Cuban. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> Next time. Next time, buddy. We got you. Come on the show. <laughs> Yeah, we should right. invite him on the show. Email his people. He's not busy anymore. <laughs> Assholes of the week, man. <laughs> All right. You have only two? I have only two, but wow. everyone. Yeah, but they're long windy. How much I wrote about one of them. No. All right. There are always a lot of assholes to choose from, but I wanted to have an Ackman free week, um, which means. Thank God. Thank you. Um, one of them is not Ackman, but one <laughs> of them, the first one here is something that Damien mentioned, which is the New Hampshire. Law. Ugh. My first asshole option is Mike Belcher, Sandra Panek, and Travis Corcoran. Okay, those are the three sponsors of the New Hampshire law to criminalize ESG. Live free or die. So, <laughs> Damien read the the uh, the the relevant bit, which is they listed. They said you you basically can't invest if you are a, a state fund or uh, investment personnel or anything like that using criteria, environmental, social, or governance criteria. criteria. So they listed governance as something that cannot be considered in investing. And the irony was not, was totally lost, not even close to being understood that they are GOP sponsors elected officials governing <laughs> by sponsoring a bill removing governance as the criteria for state investments. And the I wanted to focus on the actual people who wrote this law oh. because because here is what John uh, or Travis Corcoran, yeah. who is a New Hampshire state representative, Here's his awesome claim to fame. I found this headline. G- this is from 2023. GOP rep Corcoran called out for using N-word 
urging others oh, to join in. Oh. In what? He's, in using the N word? He said on Twitter. On Twitter, of course. Obviously on Twitter. Shocked. The only place Shocked. you could say this. Yeah. Quote, we must all say or type the word N word in a public place as a declaration that the progs can't control our thoughts or our oh, behaviors, what? even if we dislike the word. That's the what he progs. wrote on his per- the progs, Should the progressives. We get t-shirts that say the progs. Meanwhile, Belcher himself defended this bill also on Twitter. By pointing out, um, Matt Levine had a whole newsletter this week uh, talking about how stupid this bill was. Um, And he, Belcher, defended himself saying, the author asserts that a prohibition on ESG investing would not allow consideration of laws and regulations. Nonsense. ESG is a specific, well-defined set of social activist criteria having nothing to do with laws or regulations. That is right. the farthest thing from what ESG is. Not only is ESG right. not well defined <laughs> or a set of social activist criteria, or specific. but it has everything to do with laws and regulations for the most part. Like the data Boringly is largely so. around yeah. that. Yeah. So um, he's saying ESG is uh, investing is a fraud. It should be criminal. Um, so the, I nominate them uh, because th- this Anyone is. Anyone who's ever looked at any ESG data. If you were to vote your proxy as a New York State fun, or a New Hampshire State fund now, it would be criminal. It, just, just the just act like, of voting your proxy would be oh. exercising a oh, shareholder geez. right, right? That's governance. That's governance. That's criminal. Cannot. And the, I love that it's punishable by not less than one year and not more than 20, which means if you do it, one year in prison is the minimum you get. That's a felony that's worse than rape oh, in most places. Wow, like if you God. look at the statutes, it doesn't necessarily like we are criminalizing using governance is now worse than like uh, some form like uh, pick a thing. Like it, yeah, there's a lot of things pass. that you don't get 20 years in prison for. I mean, at least right? I have another reason not to move to New Hampshire. Mm. It, this is bananas. So good luck, New Hampshire, because you can't invest in any fund anywhere that does any analysis that involves who manages the, the the company, what they think, how they're structured. You can't even look at companies and say they have two two classes of shares. Is that a problem? That's governance research. That's least, governance criteria. At least Enron would still be a thing maybe in New Hampshire. I mean, that basically leaves them with investing entirely in cash, which congratulations. Uh, that's Bitcoin, what every w- winning investor can do. Or Russian bonds. Because we, we know that you can't do any governance research on Russian bonds. There's no governance. So it's, it works out really well. All right, well. come on. You're depressing me. Number two is cowardly, impotent investors. Wait, you do that every week, don't you? Well, I guess the running I mean, well, theme of our company. Yeah. <laughs> Did something happen? It right, always three happens. Things happen. yeah. Three things happen. First of all, there was this headline, BlackRock stresses financial strength over ESG and company calls. Right. So BlackRock is now on the record as saying they're, they're, out. they're out of ESG. They're only Done. focused on financial resilience. Weren't they Down. the leaders? Whatever that oh, means. That's what they called themselves. But doesn't they financial the resilience imply doesn't doesn't financial resilience imply that the necessity to pay attention to ESG risks? Uh, this is all Dude, kabuki theater. Right? Whenever okay. you say resilience, I literally picture a Florida going underwater and how not resilient that is. Or but, Maine. Hey, forget the environment. The coast of Maine, New Hampshire too. This is, this is happening at the same time that this the uh, story in Axios broke that center right groups, as in like you know moderate Republican groups, mm-hmm. have all signed a letter about ESG, saying we have to stop the laws against ESG. Okay. Let, in fact, the letter I demanded, like let investors make investment decisions. Yeah. They're making mm-hmm. their own decisions. Mm-hmm. You can't criminalize a decision you don't like from a private party who's making a decision. Right? Yeah, like, this all feels very tantrum-y. It, yeah. it is. It's man babies. We're, we're at man baby stage. Okay. Um, Hands made the, tail. The second story is Damien already brought brought up, which is Elon Musk black, blackmailing the Tesla investors. Um but I actually did a dive mm-hmm. on who the investors were because I want to be specific when I say impotent investors. CalPERS, yeah. I looked through all their voting records. CalPERS voted no 
on Denholm, Oren Pris, That's Wilson chair, Thompson, yeah. a number of Wilson the board Thompson, at really? Tesla. Yes. Isn't Wilson Thompson They've, like the one that we determined really is the only independent director? She might be the only independent one. Like has no connection to Elon Musk. <laughs> Uh, Cal Sturz voted yeah. no to Musk. Yes. Dan Holm wow. voted no to Straubel, who's yes. a, a, another ex Wait, which Tesla Musk? person. Which Musk? K- Kimball or Elon? Elon okay. Musk. But Elon voted Musk. yes on Kimball? Every only nicers <laughs> voted no on Kimball. I can't figure out why Calpers <laughs> yes, and Cal Sturz voted I yes on Kimball. I don't, I don't no get it. The don't luckiest get man in the world. But Kimble look, Musk. they <laughs> voted no on most of it. So nicers actually voted no to everyone on the board that currently is on the board. Who's nicers? The only one they, Who's they voted. It's the New York um, City employee. Okay. Those these are the 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 okay. biggest retirement funds in this country. Yeah. All right. Um, they voted no to everyone on the board Thank you. entirely. They just said this board is a fake. It's yeah, a fraud. Yeah. They, for, they recognized it. Except for Wilson Thompson. Yeah. Meanwhile, BlackRock voted yes to the whole board. Mm. Vanguard Even voted Kimble. yes to they want the in there. whole board, yeah. including Kimball. Yeah. SSGA, Fidelity, yes to everyone. Obviously. So there is a very big disconnect between the asset managers mm-hmm. who basically represent clients but have no stake in the company themselves. They take a fee to manage the money, but they don't have a stake. They are voting yes with management why every don't they, time. Why don't they abstain? Why are and they? The managers, they're not they're, doing their jobs, Matt. Why don't they abstain on the vote? Why are they? Why are they voting for? It's a vote against management. That's a I know, vote but against they're not. Management. But they're clearly not doing any due diligence. It's here. easier to vote yes than abstain or. It's vote easier no. to not show up to the vote. So you have these managers on one side that get yeah. paid to not do due diligence, and on the other side you have actual investors who own the shares for long periods of time, like the pension funds. And the, all the biggest ones are voting no. All the biggest ones say, get the F out with this board. Meanwhile, BlackRock and all the big managers who are supposed to represent clients say yes. So I know there's like this whole narrative about how like they have a social ESG agenda and they're all woke. They vote with management every time. I, I don't understand how they could be woke. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the last story, Damien, you pulled um, last night. Spotify CEO says oh, he's yeah. probably the least powerful person in the company, what, what kind despite of a the fact. Ass hat is this? <laughs> that he has seventy four point four percent voting rights. His and he's a founder and he's a CEO. <laughs> Spotify CEO. His name is Daniel Eck. Yeah. It's not Spotify CEO. And the co-founder that he owns all the voting rights with is Martin Lorenzen. So th- this is what investors are exposed to. This is what they allow to keep happening. Well, so what those do you are mean? your two options. But, he, but they control 74% of the voting rights. How are investors supposed to, what are they supposed to do about this Because one? investors still buy the stock, right? Oh, like they IPO'd, yeah. they made a ton of money. They're on indexes. They still buy the stock. So rather than divesting from every company that is dual class, because you're worried that meta shares will be valuable and you have no rights, you own the stock. But, do something. Yeah, do they, something. They buy the Get stock out. because it's a great app to ensure that your favorite artist not named Taylor Swift received no money for all of their uh, work and uh, 0.0003 yeah. cents per spin? Per yeah. yeah, something like that. The least. Uh, wait, so can, I re- can I just repeat that? The CEO founder uh, of Spotify says says he is probably the least powerful person <laughs> in the company. That's what he said. <laughs> So those are your options. How sad. Yeah, that's your sad. options are the three Maybe sponsors in the New Hampshire Spotify. bill. we should get Spotify. We'll have more Yeah, we power. can be more, Ooh, more powerful. Yeah, yeah. an excellent wow. idea. From the- um, and then cowardly, <laughs> impotent investors. And by investors, I do mean the asset managers who say yes to everything management puts in front easy. of them. This one's easy. I'll go someone else go first. All right, you like going owners. first. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. Let's see. This one's too Ooh, easy. I? It's just the two now. I just made it binary. I know. One, two, one, two, one, one two. One of them's on here uh, every week, so you can vote for that one next week. Okay. I'm going to go with the uh, the bill introduction in New Hampshire. I mean, how, yeah. how could Mike it not Belcher. be that? How could that not be the asshole of the week? I don't know. Well, let, let Jesse vote. That's what I was going to vote I mean, for. Oh, it's a Mike sweet Mike Belcher. We got bullied Sandra into voting Travis. <laughs> I just cannot believe no, that ridiculous. a man who sponsored a bill to kill ESG tweeted that everyone should say the N word well, to terrible. stop the you know Everyone what? should join in as <laughs> you if know, they were a party. What the hell is that? Matt, I don't know if you did How a dive does he on. have a job? <laughs> I don't know and if you did a dive. Where are PR people? <laughs> I don't know if you did a dive on Mike Belcher, by the way, but I spent, unfortunately, I spent a half hour in his sub stack this morning. I mean, this guy is just as vile. I mean, he's making. He's he's a 
he governs his whole life by, I, I guess, by being like a very strong Bible Christian, and he's making the case that mm. hate is fine, and that we should we need to exercise the hate emotion more often because. Uh, you know, because the Bible basically says so. So, well, there is a lot of hate in the Bible. He is not wrong. Well, well yeah, that's what he's saying. He's saying you shouldn't be ashamed to Pretty hate. Pretty gnarly. And, and he's saying this yeah, in the context. In. And, and he, Cheryl said that he wrote this in the context of of hating other races and, and hating other oh, um, non hetero non hetero people. It doesn't matter. It's going to win because I mean, why would they? Uh, whatever constituents well, put him more- in the first place, they're going to they're going to put him back in. I mean, I don't know. If there's more attention on it, I feel like maybe they I, will I, be shamed out of novelty. You're more I think idealistic I did, than I am. I, I didn't, am. I didn't. I didn't. I did jump into the bill itself, and um, it, it required for every New Hampshire bill is actually an estimate of how much it will cost the state. Mm-hmm. And in the part um, that it will cost the state, he's a negative. Number. They wrote indeterminable. Oh, like as in it's not possible to calculate mm-hmm. how bad this would be for the state if we were to enact it, which. It made me realize that why wouldn't you just say everything's indeterminable? Right. Like why 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 even put a number there ever if you could just yeah, put if that's indeterminable? <laughs> like yeah. forget it. Well, let's keep uh, an eye on this because this would be sad. That means we have to now that we're tired. Let's get exhausted. <laughs> let's get exhausted, <laughs> Jesse. I have not done a good job with the. Okay, to Here kick it off. Headlines like this are exhausting to mm-hmm. me. British gas boss Chris O'Shea. Oh my gosh! They named him. Somebody got named. They named him. This is a quote from him. I can't justify my pay of four and a half million pounds. Where, where, so like, uh, it kind of makes you feel like, oh, he's got some awareness that he's overpaid. Yeah. No. Oh. No. No. Is this, he saying he's underpaid? No, oh. he's not saying he's underpaid. <laughs> that but, I mean, that's what I thought. But he is just he goes on to justify it. So he says, I can't justify it, but oh. this is what's happening. So a little background info. He was on BBC. They were talking about how UK domestic energy customers are having trouble paying and energy is expensive. Electricity and gas have been really expensive. So one of the statistics they mentioned is that energy customers have fallen nearly three billion pounds behind on bills. Ooh. So they're talking about this and they tr- and then the interviewers turn it to his pay package. Nice. And they say, you're making four and a half million pounds. And his response is... I'm incredibly fortunate. I don't set my own pay. That's set by our remu- uh-huh. remuneration committee. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> you can't justify a salary of that size. It's a huge amount of money to anyone looking at it. He went on to say his mother is on basic state pension and what? that many customer he knows many customers are struggling. Oh my god. Also, but he also pointed out that the presenters interviewing him also received well over oh. the average wage Uh-oh. and did not set their own salary. You rich, green and journalists. Dude, this sounds like a fun interview. that two years ago, he turned down $1.1 in bonuses because everyone was having trouble. Oh. Mm-hmm. Everyone I'm did. like, yeah. this is just so this is lame. The, the By the COVID way, the bonus reduction, huh? It's is- lame, it's privilege, and like, hand your mom some friggin' money. Like, if... <laughs> no. <laughs> Jesse, he she does it so he can her u- Yeah, he doesn't, so he can use this in interviews. <laughs> Let me add this is this is Chris mm-hmm. O'Shea, who's CEO Chris of O'Shea. Centrica. That's the name of the company. Company Centrica. They're in our database. He's got Centrica. He controls twenty percent of board influence. Oh, yeah. that means he gets a nice little bump over <laughs> the the compensation committee that sets his pay. I just don't, yeah, I don't like the phrasing. It kind of made me feel like, okay, here's a guy who has some awareness. No. He, he just, I've seen done. this I've He's seen this privileged. play before, Jesse, because where where CEOs they they push off responsibility to the compensation committee, which they yep. which they have handpicked essentially with <laughs> yeah. their peers right, and yeah. other CEOs I didn't do that it. ensure the board does it. that ensure totally. that they're gonna get these high pays. But I've seen this play before, but cool. this is, but that's a misleading headline, you're right, Jesse. Okay, next up. Headline: Women added to COP29 climate summit committee after backlash. Yes. Aww. Really though, Come on, it after the really backlash. it took backlash to add women to like. Okay, so the president of Azerbaijan has 
created the committee, I assume, from what I've read. Yes. He didn't think it was weird that there was 30 men and no women. Like, yeah. I'm sorry, but this is where we've decided to host the summit when the president Who's of we? the country, well, <laughs> yeah. the, uh, the, the world, the UN <laughs> has decided no to host this. it. Us when polluters. there's a president of the country that thought it was totally normal. I would have said and East right Hartford, and okay. <laughs> uh, so anyways, he's since added 11 women and also added more men. Yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah, well, to the board. God, that's called the dilution I think two effect. more men. I think he added Jesse, two more men. Jesse, you're foreshadowing my winner of the week, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Good. So it's one of the two men. You're I just, one of the two I just men <laughs> want to suggest that maybe we just like stop the cops now. Like they're not oh. doesn't really feel like oh. they're productive no, in no, any no. way. Greta agrees. It's a fun hangout though. Uh, okay, and lastly, Damien, you kind of grazed over this headline mm -hmm. when you were talking about Cheryl. Uh, meta documents show a hundred thousand children sexually harassed daily on its platforms. We know that this goes on. We know that they don't invest in protecting these children. I didn't know it was that many. That's a lot. Well, 100,000 yeah. daily. Yeah, it is a lot. Children sexually um, harassed. I mean, Jesus. Yeah, yeah like and that. what what was detailed in this article. So these, this is, uh, this was a suit. And mm -hmm. so they had to, Meta had to respond to it. And there was internal company documents that were released through this. And what kind of came out of it is that there's a lot of employees that have been pushing to do something, pushing the company trying to do mm -hmm. something about it. Like there was a senior meta employee that described Cheryl how Sandberg? his own daughter. Oh, no. Okay. No, they didn't name him. Not but Cheryl his Sandberg. own daughter had been solicited via Instagram mm -hmm. and sent the testimony to Congress and his efforts to fix the problem were ignored. Oh, my God. Well, I mean... <laughs> He's got to get dual class. He would feel more comfortable if he had dual class shares. Then he could get more done. So, but, but, but Jesse, can we still call Cheryl Sandberg a feminist, though? Is that allowed? No. Oh. Oh. No. No. So, anyways, I don't know. I just think, I think we need to demand more. I think everybody needs to get off, get off the platform. I mean, That's easy. Don't, don't let hey, your kids on the problem, platform. Problem solved. Get off the platform. Yeah. You just solved oh, the problem. I love it. We can't obviously rely on them. Don't buy a Tesla. Hey, problem everybody, solved again. Everybody go to X. <laughs> yeah, go to X. Do not yeah. go to just X. Everybody go to X. Just got off all. So, anyways, those are my three. TikTok. Those are good. Misleading, the run you for a while. misleading headlines. Women These are good, get added uh, only after backlash. This is a real I'll battle here. Yeah, go ahead, I'll Ari. Go first. I I love the Chris O'Shea. I can't justify my Ooh. pay of four point five. But let me try million. <laughs> and also presenter, how much do you get paid? I love that. No. By the I way, uh, kudos. This is a video online. I'm gonna go watch it. Kudos to the BBC for this headline because what they did here is they devalue the name of the dumb company and they had the name of the guy <laughs> who actually runs it and said it, Chris yeah. O'Shea. Well done. I like it. Uh, that's that your vote, Ari. Exhausting, though. That's my vote. Uh, Matt, you got a vote here? I don't really know my vote yet. I guess I voted um, not on most exhausting, but on most fun of the exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got a vote. Yeah. I got a vote. It's, it's the wrong vote. My I, vote I, is easy. I got a. I got a quick vote. Quick vote. It's got to be right, meta good. for me. Got to be meta. Say it. Oh. I just can't believe that it's still. I can't believe it's still allowed to, to legally exist, and I can't believe. The, the the billions of people who use it every minute of their lives. That's the two things exhausting. Yeah, me. I'm not surprised by Azerbaijan not having any women, frankly. I love the two men that snuck in there. I like the two men. That, I, in fact, I <laughs> like that too women. much to <laughs> vote it uh, exhausting. Um, all, and also, like, the $4.5 million in pay, I feel like, is low compared to I what know, we I know, I like, know. That's, that's where I thought this was going. Like, not for the like, UK. Like, but the other the headlines right now that are going on are Jamie Dimon got his the highest pay ever at 36 yeah. million Bob and Iger Elon too, Musk, over 30 Elon yeah but Musk does that is mean for, four and a half is okay no it doesn't, no, doesn't but i'm saying elon musk is asking for 60 billion as his next pay package fire him, and fire him. that guy's got four million <laughs> and um, with the mom on state money <laughs> so he's basically Help your freaking the out. he's basically a welfare oh ceo God. like he could barely I make like ends to see meet. my mom struggle he could barely make ends meet jesse he, he said his mom was on the basic state pension oh was. yeah that's was yeah. um, so I'm going with Meta because um, there is no way that that Meta should exist anymore. Yeah. Like All they, right, they do nothing. Um, All right, who which wants... means what are we at? Who on the week? Who 
This got winners. I got a winner. I got a winner. Let me go first. You always go first. No, I want to go first. I never go first. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> Excuse me. I'll decide. Jesse, go first. <laughs> That's okay, I just, I just have a nice, just lighthearted. Just eyes are by Jean. You wouldn't go at all. It's uh, not yeah, Taylor Swift. True. <laughs> true. Let's go. I just have a nice, lighthearted one. The winner, my winners of the week are couples who do date night at Applebee's. Because oh, well, Apple, no. <laughs> Applebee's. This is very out of the blue for me. But Applebee's launches... One year of weekly date night passes for two hundred dollars. Wait, no. Jesse, wow. you would, <laughs> Jesse, you would find all of their the food that they sell to be disagreeable. You would find all of the sourcing but, to be disagreeable. I all, know, but all the ways they treat their labor to be disagreeable. Don't, doesn't everyone deserve to go on date nights? But the whole point, Jesse, this is, of this, way, this is making date night accessible. <laughs> regular date nights. I I read this article. I'm There's an a, advocate for strengthening your relationship. This is not <laughs> what you McDonald's. think it is. This is not what you think it is. There's a limited. They cap. There's a there's a maximum that they can spend. They cap that, and they, you know that the couples are going to spend over that number, and they're going to Apple Free is going to make money off of this. I didn't is, read that part of it. Here's what I think. I think this is better than Cracker Barrel, and still the worst. <laughs> well, well you're, Damien, Damien <laughs> you're just upset because there's probably not an Applebee's near you. Yeah, I, I know. We have. Come I think on. we have an Applebee's. I, oh, look, yeah. my, you already looked it up. The audience is going to hate my. The audience is going to hate my choice too. That's why he knows too. these details. Yeah. Uh, uh, my winner is of the week it? is Backlash. Oh, why? What? Because look, <laughs> oh yes, we we reported last week that COP twenty nine released a board with no women, none, and because of a backlash, we at least now have twelve women. So I'm gonna oh, give the winner wow. of the week to Backlash. Keep right. okay. keep saying, well, keep arguing, keep talking, keep complaining. Don't stop. Keep this backlashing. Is how, this is how progress works, though. Instead of just saying, like, I'm not surprised that happened, keep, you know, mm, do backlash. Nice. Come on. Be surprised. I have a I have a winner. Yeah. Uh, my winner is the two men. Yes. Oh, that is all right. <laughs> See, you're just snarking me. You're just what snarking my winner. That is such a problem. No, I'm not running that some, down. I, I'm we not need running some that extra down. backlash. Um, my winner of the week was dual class shares because dual class shares Don't they win, win every, every week. week. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. I All hate right. dual class Anybody shares. Anybody got a prediction? Uh, not mine's, me today. mine's easy. Uh, quick and easy. Sheryl Sandberg boomerangs back to Disney board, mm. starting a boomerang director trend. Wow, I love oh. this winner. And you know what? This would be a flex of all winners. This would be a flex for Bob Iger anyway. I think that this would this would shut up at least seven of All the right. eight activists who are after him. Uh, and more rumors about Disney and Apple becoming one company. Yeah, Ooh, Ooh, I, I like that too. Mm, well, wait, Apple, wait, why would Facebook. that be though? Yeah, <laughs> why know. Apple? Yeah. Oh, I have no idea. Go ahead, Matt. <laughs> uh, this, she knows everyone there, of course. This week, uh, my prediction is this weekend I figure out how to use Reddit. Oh. And uh -oh. so that I can post on Wall Street Bets Finally. and create a vote anti-Boeing, vote against Boeing meme, and uh, use our data. And mm -hmm. then, like GameStop, mm. all the retail investors vote out the entire Boeing board. Wow. Ooh. And then I, we all buy the stock and we all make millions <laughs> on its recovery. Yeah. That's my wow. prediction. God, I love I that. Hope so. Save Let's the company. It. Pay package. <laughs> it's our very successful company. How dare you? That is Jesse the Money Whisperer and Ari the Data Queen and Hazelnut Rollis. I am your analyst, Holm Amiscardi. We are Free Float. If you like this, come back next week. We're actually going to have a full normal week next week. Monday, Wednesday, Ooh. Friday, and then Thursday, we've got the proxy countdown. If you haven't Yay. been getting that, that is the only show that you can listen to anywhere that anywhere. gives you actual proxy recommendations using data. With the occasional swear. We're sorry <laughs> about that, but it happens. Otherwise, come back next week. We'll see you then. Goodbye.